The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to our webinar this morning, uh, Demystifying the Carrier Buzz with SIP. My name is uh, Joe Hines, and I own Voice and Data Networks. And uh, this is our third of uh, a six-part series on SIP. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining and uh, comment on the enthusiastic response we've gotten for this um, webinar. Um, we have had over 100 registrants in every single session, and we've gotten great feedback on our session. So um, I want to thank you, each and every one of you for attending and to continuing to give us your feedback. Uh, the, the reason that um, Voice and Data drives these sessions is because what we're trying to do is bring value to yourselves in the way of in uh, in the way of education, and these are some of the issues that mutually end users and ourselves as a uh, vendor are um, going through this uh, mutual education process in order to. Uh, define and deliver better communications for our, for our uh, our company. So the point I'm trying to drive here is that um, we we uh, clearly have hit a nerve with SIP. And if there's any other kind of topics that you folks would like to hear about, we've got three more sessions of the SIP webinar series, but we can run secondary series or, or a series after the three more SIP webinars. We'd love to hear the topics because we want to make sure that what we are providing is valuable to our, our, our customers. So I'm going to spend about one minute going through the VDN overview slide, and uh, then I'm going to give it to uh, Jim Sevier, who uh, has been giving us these webinars, and uh, I really like the way Jim delivers this. In any, in any case, Voice and Data Networks has uh, been around for, we're in our 17th year. We operate nationally, service and solutions. We provide uh, voice communications. Our mission is to make communication applications return profitability and efficiencies to our customers. Our focus is you. We have authorizations in uh, many different technologies that have to do with communication. We typically come in the voice through the voice door and then operate all the underlying technologies as well. Um, and we try and stay on the whole communication cycle of the technology, or excuse me, the whole technology cycle of the of the communications issue, which is, you know, um, implementation and of course strategic planning, selection, implementation, and we try and spend a lot of our time in the support of the system on the back end. So we have uh, maintenance, implementation, move add, change, single point of service, uh, and obviously all those different modalities, video, contact center. Do a lot in wireless and video these days. We have those are some of our customers, and we're very proud to have you folks as interested parties and customers. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim and have him do his magic yet another month. So thanks very much for joining us, Jim. And if you could take it off from here. Thank you very much, Joe, um, and thank you again, everyone, for being here. We've got, um, as Joe had mentioned, this is the third in the series on SIP. Um, demystifying the carrier buzz surrounding SIP. I think one of the interesting elements about today's topic is that we're going to sort of we're going to sort of uh, tailgate off of last month's uh, SIP elements uh, that really talk a lot about you know some of the key components. But today we're going to really focus on those components and say, look, what about those components is going to change my business? And I think that's ultimately the question that a lot of businesses are asking about SIP is that, yes, I'm definitely looking for a return on investment from a, from a trunking and a carrier perspective, but what is it specifically about SIP that is going to help me augment my business, streamline my process, make me more efficient, and really trans the transformation of user communications is that key element that is going to bring that about. So we're going to talk today uh, very short, you know, over uh, the next 30, 40 minutes, just kind of give you a, a brief understanding of the transformation options and elements associated with that transformation so that you can sort of build your, your justifications associated with SIP, not just on the, the technical merits and the cost justification, but the business opportunities that it brings as well. So 
I guess the, the element that I want to, to really kick this thing off with, and I'm sort of using the, uh, the, the Wizard of Oz uh, analogy here, pay no attention to the man behind the screen. There's a lot going on behind the screen or behind the scenes in regards to SIP. Um, specifically, you know, there's a lot of questions out in the marketplace surrounding what makes all this SIP stuff work. And, you know, in, in past sessions, like in last month's sessions and the kickoff session that we've had, a lot of what we do and a lot of, of the value that we bring uh, in the enterprise from a communications perspective, a lot of that's hidden from the end user. Uh, but, it, but ultimately, in the end, the end user is going to have to alter the way that they communicate, and they're going to transform the way they make decisions regarding communications, and, and that is ultimately the value proposition that SIP brings to the table. Certainly, that is the value proposition of SIP, is being able to make that transformation possible, but doing it in such a way that it has significant value to enterprise operations, whether it's small, medium, or large. Right? The other really interesting thing that I really enjoy about SIP is, is that it's not, its focus is, is broad. Its focus is small, medium-sized, large-sized enterprises, single location, multi-location. I mean, certainly the economy of scale grows better when you're in a larger environment in any technology, and SIP is no different. But what is interesting is, is that, you know, we're going to take a moment today to sort of pull back the curtain behind SIP and show you how SIP can actually help transform the way users communicate. And I think that's ultimately, when we look at this, I think that's ultimately one of the things that non-technical decision makers are going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for that hook that says, this isn't just an infrastructure thing that I have really no clue what's going on and how it works or why it works, but there's actually a business element to this and that business element, I do understand, and I can put my hands around and, and become a complete supporter of the technology. So, you know, when you're looking at SIP, when you're looking at the technology of SIP, you can get lost pretty easily in a lot of the tech. But today, and, I, and specifically, I think I mentioned it in the last month's session, I'm pretty excited about this particular element uh, because I think this element has, I think, uh, the most, the, it's the sexiest the part of this. It's got the glamour and the glitz. This is the piece that makes SIP a reality in business. And I think that, when you, when you, when you step back and you go, wow, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to implement SIP, I think now, I think you can see, once we get through this, the value proposition that SIP will bring to the enterprise. So, certainly if we're looking at a cast of characters uh, for SIP, I think the, the element that le is, is playing the leading role in user transformation is the user agent. And if you recall from what we talked about last month, and if you weren't here, I'll do a quick recap of last month as it relates to user agents. The user agent is code that sits inside of electronic elements, whether that electronic element is a computer, you know, whether that electronic element is your car, whether that electronic element is your refrigerator, anything that has an electronic component, you can install a user agent. And think of that user agent as, a, as an element that both listens and transmits information about what's going on inside that piece of electronics. That, that I think, is, is sort of an interesting, when you, when you peel back the tech and you say, okay, what is SIP? I think SIP ultimately is that gateway for organizations. To, to allow the electronica, if you will, allow the electronics associated with what's installed at the end user's uh, uh, desktop or at the end user's, uh, you know, communications, allow that device to actually give us more information. And when we do that, what happens is, is that we get a much more richer experience when it comes to sending and receiving information, and, or just our day-to-day, -day, you know, I, I guess what I'll say, and I'll, and I'll back this up in a minute when we get through some slides here, but I think ultimately the question we need to ask ourselves is, if we knew more information about who we were trying to reach, would we alter the way that we try to reach out to them? I think that's a pretty good question to ask ourselves, and that's really, from an operational perspective, the value proposition of SIP is, Look, if I knew this information, what would it change? But specifically, when we look at SIP, 
remember that the user agent records status and it helps other devices with the routing decisions as to what to do with that information. So the user agent listens, it records, it sends. Right? So those and, and it sends it to pretty much anything that's going to listen. It sends it out across the network. But specifically it's looking for local registers and, and proxies and, and routers and that type of thing. But but that's the role of the SIP user agent. And again, and I, I don't want to keep going over this, but I think the point is, is important to make. The user agent is singularly the most important element of SIP as it relates to business operations. Let me say that again. It is the single most important element associated with business operations. And the reason for that is, is that's the tie. That's the, that's the programming interface, if you will, between business process on one hand and, and business technology on the other. That's what brings them together. That's the element that puts all these two, these two components together. And right now, business process works separately in a silo separately from business operation. So if we can bring those two together, we would change the way we work. We would become more efficient. We would, we would have more information to make better decisions. And decisions wouldn't be delayed as much as they are today. So we're going to talk about that. But as, before we get into that, let me ask a question. I've got a poll that I want to bring up here. So let me bring up the first poll today. The first poll um, is, let me bring it up. And here's the question. And I believe you should be able to see the poll. And I'd like you to take a moment to uh, take just look at what it is. It's a fairly basic question. But I want to make sure, and I think everyone's getting, I'm looking at all the responses here, and everyone's pretty much getting it. Um, the SIP user agent element listens and sends information to everything, right? Its job is to collect information and send it out. And um, so looks like I've got, yeah, it looks like we got like a really, really good response here. So. The bottom line here is, is that the user agent, the significance of the user agent is, is that the, the SIP elements that listen to it are other user agents, the other registrars or registrar servers and proxies, all of the above basically. User agents talk to each other, user agents talk to, here's an example, let me give you an example. Uh, a user agent talking to another user agent, you, you do this every day, we do this in instant messaging. When I'm typing on my keyboard and you hear you know, me scratching on my keyboard, one of the things that the SIP user agent doing is logging, is noting that the keys are moving, that there's key movement. Now, that information then gets transmitted to another user agent and says, hey, user agent, hang on, Jim's typing. And then when that other user agent is typing, it sends a message to me and says, hey, hold on, Jim, you know, the, I'm typing right now. Jim, hold on a second while this message comes across. That's a very simple example of user agent to user agent communication. The registrar on a proxy, the reason why that, that the user agent sends information to the registrar on a proxy is to determine whether or not that person is even available or open to receive a SIP request. And then the other one is where are they located in the network. So user agents exchange information to tell each other what's going on with the end user device computer, smartphone, car, LG refrigerator, it, it, whatever. It, the user agents speak back and forth to each other, but they also speak to the registrars, and the registrars listen uh, for these elements from the user, user agent. So um, great, uh, great response there, and, and excellent response from the, from the group. I'll close that element up, and I'll tee up the other one until we're ready. Look at that. I'm getting, I'm getting really good at this. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what type of information we have. Um, look, the presence, the, the information that the user agent is sending, the most important piece of that information is our presence. What is our current status? Are we typing? Are we away? Are we in a meeting? Is it looking at my Outlook calendar? Is it looking at my IBM Notes calendars and, and Domino? Am I, am I do I have a preferred method of contact for you? I mean, when you think about this, um, maybe even maybe you don't want people 
to see this type of information, and you've just turned on your hide me SIP setting, and and the user agent who requests information about who and where I am, the other user agent says, I'm sorry, I'm, I've closed my door and my user, I'm protecting my user, and that user wants to be left alone for a while, so no conversation. And if you notice that on Skype, you have this ability to be in an away mode, like in a do not disturb mode. That do not disturb mode is just that, it's a hide me. Right? So when you go to Skype and you use that Skype element, what that element is telling other SIP Skype elements is, hey, don't bother them, don't, 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 don't mess with them. And that's an important element. Why is that important element? Why is that element so important? Because being efficient shouldn't make me more accessible. Well, that's that's actually an interesting statement, Jim. You just said being efficient doesn't mean I should be more accessible. Being efficient, and, and honestly, that uh, that statement is actually 100% accurate. What it, what I have a hard time justifying to a non-technical person is why that's important. Because specifically, when it, when you have access 24-7, 365 days a year, you would be inundated with too much access. So having the ability to shut off that access so you could actually get some work done, that's an important element in business. It was an important element from the beginning. It'll be an important element in the future. It's certainly an important element today. So having that ability to check status, know your availability, having a preferred method of communication, all that information, those are called rules the rules that you set up in order to let everyone else know, let other user agents know what and how you like to communicate. Now, do we do this today? If we don't have SIP, do we do this today? The answer is yes. We absolutely do this today. But we do it manually, right? If I want to, if I hit the do not disturb button on my phone, my phone doesn't ring and you go right into my voicemail, right? But I got to remember to hit the do not disturb button. Now, you might say, hey, Jim, you have to remember the, the hide me setting, right? You have to remember to go into do not, you know, do not disturb in Skype. Well, I could have Skype read my Outlook calendar, and if I have a meeting, it automatically goes into do not disturb. <laughs> now, that's efficient. That's when we've got some value. That's where we've got um, the ability to become a lot more efficient in what we do. And... And again, having an override, I can talk about this ad nauseum, having an override so that it automatically moves me into an away condition or do not disturb condition, but maybe I have a set of override rules that say, look, if it's my boss, if it's my wife, if it's my husband, it's my kids, if it's somebody, right, not my brother-in-law, I'm not going to give him overriding, but if it's anybody else, certainly they, it's probably an emergency that they're trying to get through to me, and I'm going to give them that opportunity to reach me. Again, all of these rules are very simple rules to make. You make rules, general rules, and then you apply them across the board, and user agents just listen for these rules, and they transmit status, right? Is this big brother? I get that a lot. Isn't this big brother talking? Isn't this, isn't this information? Couldn't this be used to find out where I'm at, what I'm doing at all times? Yeah, absolutely, it could. But the fact that you can hide yourself, the fact that you can, you can not allow anybody access to you is, is that control arm, is that you know, that sort of a control mechanism that says, look, um, the people within my organization who I do business with, who I am helping move my business forward with, those people have access to me, and here's, here's their rules. Um, you know, people hacking in from outside, gathering that information, that's, that we have control mechanisms for, and we can talk about, and we will talk about that when we go into other, when we go into other sessions. So I'm going to ask another poll question here. And I'm going to launch it. I'm going to go into the next question here. Oops. Um, let me launch it now. So you guys should be seeing this uh, next poll question, which is, you know, why is presence the single most important element um, associated with this? Um, so take a second, think about it, um, and provide me with your thoughts. I mean, I think that, and and, and please. You know, please excuse me. You know, if, if some of these if some of these poll questions are a little basic, I, I what I really just wanted to make sure is just I need to take a pulse. I need to since this is a one way form, this is just a way for me to take a poll. And having that pulse is through these questions. Now, I am seeing that um, that there's 
you know, like an 80-20 thing going on or 85-15 thing going on here in regards to the response. I'm seeing some folks moving towards making communication simpler, and that's absolutely uh, an, an element. But presence also allows me to make a better choice, and it helps make better routing decisions as well. So we, we see that. We see those questions. We see, you know, when, when we have presence enabled in our environment, it actually is all of the above. It actually allows me to make better choices, helps me helps the system make better routing decisions, and it also makes communication simpler. And I think if you look at that, pick and choose your, your, your value statement, right? Pick and choose your own value statement. If the way you're trying to get SIP integrated into your organization is, is that you want to have better control, more routing, and, and more intelligent routing, then, then, then focus on that element of presence. Uh, but if you are trying to just make communication simpler and and remove the complexity that's been added over the last 10 years, um, then then you know focus on on that one. So you've got your choice here. The answer is all of the above. Eating one of those, um, and pick and choose which one that you that you really like to, to work with and move forward with that as your justification. Uh, let's talk about justification for a second. So here we have. Um, the need, right, for SIP. And I've never really been a big fan of, of thinking up these applications that justify technology because everyone has their own value proposition associated to a tech. Now, but there are definite values um, that all of this information can, can make um, when we're talking about routing. And, and routing is an interesting element in communications. We route data communications, we route video communication, we route voice communication. And now SIP is, I'm going to put all three of these modes of communication under a single stream and now I've got to make more use of the routing that needs to go on in order to make efficient use of the bandwidth that I have. That We'll talk about bandwidth utilization because that's a, that's a key element there. But in the old days, <laughs> I call them the olden days, in the old days you know, when the most status information people got was a busy, a busy signal, right? That was basically, well, you know, I guess you also got, you know, you want to write the voicemail, right? So if you were in the, if you're in the early cellular days or if you're in the cellular days and I called your cell phone and it went directly to voicemail, I knew exactly that I knew either, A, your cell phone was turned off or you were out of reach or out of area, right? So same with a telephone. If, the, if I rang your phone and it rang through busy, that means that you didn't have a way for for a secondary line to come in, and you waved me off, basically. Um, so SIP takes these notifications and allows IT to control and report, most specifically report, these types of transactions. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that specifically is notifications can be sent to anything, right? So the user agent collects all this data, says who we are, what we're doing, and our status, and all this stuff. And they send it across the network. Well, it ultimately gets to a router of some sort, where some, some call has to go in a certain direction, and some data element has to go in a, another direction, and the video has to go in another. But what if, what if in, during a you know, peak calling period, where a bandwidth is at its maximum cost, we might want to offload types of communications that can be more delay sensitive or be less delay sensitive, and I can move them over mediums that are less expensive for me to transport them. Maybe there's going to be more signal loss, but it, you know, it's department to department, it's peer to peer, it's not like it's going to be, you know, it's not like talking to a customer. So I may want to make time of day routing decisions. I may want to make routing decisions based on the type of call that it is. Like, hey, if it's a 911 call, it goes right to the top, it goes right to the forefront of all routing decisions, and it gets right out the door. Or if it's a, if it's a conversation being uh, at a board level inside of an organization, uh, it might be nice to make sure that those, those connections, those session requests are all done over the most delay-sensitive, accurate, smart, intelligence, high depth, whatever, Make sure they're on the best circuits that they can possibly be on. And instead of, you know, making sure that the people dial the right numbers to get on the right circuits, no. 
you look at their user status, you look at their your URI, your, your user identifier within SIP, and you route them accordingly, no, no, no matter where they come from, and, and you put them over the proper signaling channel. That is the value proposition that IT can bring back to communications. Because today, still, a significant majority of communications that occur within IT are outside of the realm of control of IT. Case in point is cellular. Cellular communications, IT does not manage. But they're somehow responsible for seeing to it that that, that that expense is managed and that bandwidth is utilized properly. Well, SIP provides you with that those, those tools to provide reporting on, on what could be considered in the old days, you know, no choice. All right. Hey, that was out of that quick. That slide was out of sequence. <laughs> Or maybe, maybe my slide, maybe my slide thing was out of sequence there. My apologies. So, another element is your address. This this is going to be this is going to be a little interesting, and I'm looking at my time to make sure that I got enough time to get through this. This is this is going to be an interesting element here, because when you go to SIP, because SIP is not device-centric, so we move from device-centric communications where everything has a telephone number and you dial every individual device singularly to connect to somebody, right? So right now I call your cell phone, I call your home phone, I call your office phone, right? I can't just call you and whichever phone that you're on ring because that would be SIP. So when I have SIP, I have to have an addressing scheme that supports my ability to just make a request of you and let the, the intelligence of SIP and the rules that you've created to define how that connection happens, whether that's video, voice, text, chat, email, whatever. And it all begins with your address of record. And this, this is the, the single unifying condition or, or element associated with SIP. Your address of record is, is your ultimate ID. It, it is your public um, uh, presence, if you will, your, your public uh, instance of who you are on the network. And it begins by saying SIP colon, and then it looks like my email address, jsevier at cnbrg.com. And that is my address of record. That's who I am. Now, think about this. How do I dial that? Uh, I don't know. How do I dial that? Well, I don't dial that because dialing is going to be a thing of the past with SIP. Dialing, having, now, it allow you to dial. There's going to be some, some areas where you can still dial because people are still going to want to dial. We haven't transformed everybody yet. But this is the, how Skype works. I don't, I can, I can dial on the dial pad inside of Skype, but I can just click on your name. And then it says mobile, cell, whatever. And then I click on whichever one I want to, to connect you with, right? Now, SIP overlays, that's the, your address of record is your contact element inside of my computer, jsevier at cnvrg.com. That's your contact element. You can send me an email there, right? But you can click on that, and now you can also make a call because that is my address of record. That is my main instance and occurrence. Well, what if there's another jsevier at cnvrg.com? Well, then my address of record would have to be jim.sevier at cnbrg.com or jeff.sevier. Well, what if there are two Jeffs, right? So you can get this and you can be Jeff R, Jeff M, right? So as long as you provide the differentiation, like we make the differentiation in email, as long as there is a differentiated address associated to who you are, that is your main address of record. But it's not about dialing anymore. We've stopped dialing, right? Now, to help you dial, we are going to provide these URIs universal resource identifier. And those identifiers, think of those identifiers as your old telephone numbers, right? Like your 555-212-1234 and your 313-4567. Those, those are your numbers, those are your elements that are associated with your address of record. So when someone looks up jsevier at cnvrg.com, what's attached to my address of record are the two ways you can communicate with me, my cell phone and my regular telephone. And I give you that, so it would be 555-212-1234 at cnbrg.com. And that equals user equals phone. 
So if you say call Jim Sevier phone or call J Sevier at cnbrg.com phone, it would it would then go. It would work. It would connect. If you just dialed my number, 555-212-1234, then it would pick up those digits and say, oh, this is the URI for this address of record that belongs to Jim. Take, here goes the call. So these are the two most important parts that make that transform user communication. So these are the techie elements. Your address of record. Everyone will have a single address of record. Everyone actually does have a single address of record. I think now it's a social security number. But I think as we move forward into this information age in communications, your address or record will be associated to how people communicate with you. And your your base, your anchor address of record will be what you consider now to be your email address. And then you will have video and cell phone and, and home phone and you will have all these URIs. So you could actually have 20 universal resource identifiers or URIs, devices, 20 devices associated with your address of record. See, that's the value here. Right? I don't have one telephone number today that you can call and it just goes out and finds me and drops me into the device that, that I'm on. Right? I have to know the device number and I've got to call that number. And if I miss you there, I've got to call another number and I've got to do all. That's, that's inefficiency. By the way, that's the definition of inefficiency. But now, SIF gives me an address of record that allows me to make, that says, look, I'm going to hide Jim's devices. I'm going to take Jim's devices, and I'm just going to move them all. You're not even going to see Jim's devices. But I'm going to present you with Jim. And Jim has a series of rules. If Jim knows you, you follow this rule. If Jim doesn't know you, you follow that rule. If, if it's between 8 and 5, you're going to follow these rules. If it's between 8 and 5 and you're someone Jim knows, you're going to follow these rules. It's a very interesting element, but it all is predicated on this, this core address, your address of record. So I think we're going to have another poll. No, not yet. So, so again, here it is a little bit more uh, written out. My address of record is this, jsevier at cnbrg.com. My URIs are, here's my cell phone, here's my office phone. Here is my personal email, my personal, uh, my business email. Here is my home number. Here are all the things. Here's all the ways you can communicate with Jim. And my rule is going to say if someone comes in to my address of record and requests a connection and they are a friend, then determine via presence, via the user agent, which one of these elements I'm using and deliver the call to me there. And the, and the person calling me, all they did was clicked on my contact database, my, my Outlook B card, and just clicked on my name. And it just went out and it said, connecting to Jim. And then, um, boom, it says, Jim wants to have a text chat with you. Right? So up comes a text chat window, and you just type away and you chat with me. Right? Who cares if you wanted to talk to me? My preferred method of communication at that point was text because I was in a meeting and I could multitask. Pretty interesting. So that's the way it works. So let's add another poll question here. Oops, did I put the right poll question in here? Yeah, let me hide that. Let me bring up the right poll question. And let's do that. So now, which is the best characteristic you believe of presence? Control or simplicity? Um, I'm going to let you guys think about this one a second. This one, I'll tell you that I'll, I'll, I'll go over the math with you once, once we get through this. But uh, I actually wrote this question very specifically. Um, Look, these are two characteristics of presence, control and simplicity. Uh, if you chose both, then you're, you're interested in both efficiency, driving efficiency within business operation, but you're also very interested in the IT structural benefit to SIP. If you chose just control, then you're really more interested in the technology to control routing decisions within IT. By the way, there is no real great answer here. I will say both because I think ultimately 
uh, you should be in both areas of both simplicity and control. But if it's if, but if you just want to get if you just want if we're a bunch of IT folks here, you just want to be controlled. That's not a bad answer. But I would say that ultimately, as as technologists and as um, as change agents to technology, I think ultimately our our constituents, our end users, the people that are going to take and use the technology, those folks are going to be the ones that they're going to need to have that simplicity element, right? The one thing that made the telephone so easy was it was so darn simple, right? And we got to get back to that because communications today isn't that simple. Um, so let's move on here. So. So think of the customization that we can now do now that we know what we know, right? So you've heard me say, you know, if you've been to any of my, any of my um, business seminars and, and, and communication seminars, one of the interesting things that I like to talk about is, you know, I know there is some elements that I know. Like, you know, I know that Monday comes after Sunday and it's before Tuesday. I know that. There's some things I know that I don't know. I, I know that I don't know how to to do brain surgery. I know I don't know how to tear, tear apart, you know, my computer and build it back up again. But then there's things I don't know that I don't know. And that's really the interesting element about transforming user communications. Your users, the, the ultimate end user of this technology is really in that last, hey, I don't even know what I don't even know. So a lot of this is, is that you're going to find areas of customization where you can deploy this technology in, in small pieces help them bite off the technology so that they can become more efficient at it. Obviously, you know, turning them over from a telephone number to an address of record from Friday to Monday is not the way to go. But giving them a tool like a soft telephony application that could dial directly from an email address and connect to someone's telephone, that's a pretty interesting tool. And you can teach them that one element before actually getting down the road of, of letting them know what an address of record is. Um, and ultimately, I don't know that anybody would want to know what an address of record is that is an end user of the technology. That's for us as technologists to, just to, to decipher and to digest. But look, control is, control is one of the ways that you should be selling these types of solutions. Um, people don't want to, to become simpler in far, as far as communications, but, but be more accessible. So you're going to want to show them that simplicity comes with control. And I keep coming back to that control piece. So that you, now you know how I would have answered that poll question. I would have gone to control. Because I really do think that when you look at what we're delivering to the enterprise, control is a big deal. And then ultimately, it also can remove those, the complexity surrounding the, the so many devices. Um, Roger McNamee, who's the founder of Silver Lake Partners, if you're not familiar with him, you should read up on some of his stuff. He's got a very interesting perspective on the future when it comes to computing. But he calls it the multiple screen center. How many screens are you carrying around with you each day? And when you look at the amount of numbers, the amount of screens that you have, you know, your cell phones, your PCs, you know, all of the addresses that you have to manage and that you're and that other people have to manage just to stay in touch with you, sift through that user agent, through presence through your address of record, through the URIs for each one of those devices, provides a level of control and a level, a level of complexity, a reduction in the level of complexity that makes it easier for end users to use their devices, makes it easier for IT to manage those devices. So when we get down to that point, I think that's ultimately the bottom line here. If I make it easier for the end user to use, right, less complex, they're going to like it more, they're going to use it more. But if it costs me more to manage that environment, that's not good. So that's one of the elements that SIP brings. It brings a control element for IT, but it brings a simplicity element for the end user. I love that. That's, there's nothing better than that. I mean, we, I don't know what else better you can get there, besides that it's free. Eh, it's not exactly free, but it's less expensive than what we got today, and that's, that's an element to consider. So if you look at all of these elements, so one of the things um, we'll get into is session management in some upcoming sessions, and I wanted to introduce it. Because session management, one of the things about all this tech is, is that it utilizes bandwidth. And we're going to have to start talking about bandwidth utilization here soon. And session management will be that element, along with presence, that helps better utilize the bandwidth that we have to spend or that we have at our fingertips. Bandwidth is not 
unlimited, by the way. It also supports this traditional dialing method, so we don't have to make the Friday to Monday cut. That's good, right? Hopefully that's good. And when you think about it, convergence has added a bit of complexity to, with all these new devices that we have to communicate with. So SIP addresses that with that address of record and the URI. Forget about having telephone numbers and addresses and text messaging and IM addresses and you know all that kind of stuff, right? Just have an address of record and a rule that says how and when and why you would want to communicate with somebody. So that's the simplification. That is the reduction in complexity and the control that you get when you have a SIP-enabled communications environment. And that ultimately will help transform user communication. Um, so look at time. I'm a little bit over. We started a little late, so hopefully that's not too bad. I want to thank you for your time. Obviously, if there's any questions, uh, I think we've got a Q&A panel here. Um, I can spend a couple of minutes here if you would like to um, um, if there's any questions, feel free to do that. Bring it in. Um, uh, but if not, let me say thank you very much for your time. Let me uh, say, you know, I do appreciate um, you guys coming out here. We've got another session coming on in, I think, um, oops, let me go back up, in um, the, this pretty much the same time frame in August. I'm sorry we don't have the date up here. We should have put that up there. And um, But again, I want to thank you for your time and your uh, attendance. And if there's any questions, feel free to route them back through Voice and Data Networks. And again, thank you very much, and we will talk to you again next month. Yes, folks, uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, you will receive an email tomorrow with uh, a link to the recorded webinar and also a link to register for part four, which is transforming business communication. It's held on Tuesday, August 30th at 10 a.m. Again, you'll receive that email tomorrow, and have a great day.